I'm John B. Cannon, and in this video, we're going to look at the Rotate tool, which is in the toolbar and does some really interesting things. Before we find out what they are, let's have a listen to the track we're going to be working on. Okay, so the rotate tool kind of lives next door to the slip tool. These are two relatively new tools that have been introduced into Logic and they exist within the toolbar and they're down here towards the bottom. And what the rotate tool allows us to do is to move either MIDI or audio back and forwards in time. Well, that's just like the slip tool, right? Well, not quite, because what the rotate tool does is to say, okay, well, a region is of a finite length. It's a fixed length. So if we move something to the left, therefore it moves out of the region and it appears at the end. In other words, what we're effectively able to do is to move a region through its length and effectively anything we push out the left-hand side reappears at the right-hand end. In other words, we're rotating the order of the events that exist within um, a region. And this is really interesting from a musical perspective in a number of different ways. So the first thing I could potentially do with the rotate tool would be to say, you know what? I potentially want to try my bass line starting on a different note. Instead of starting on the chord it does right now, what happens if I decide that I want this second set of notes to be the beginning of this sequence? Well, normally, in order to try that out, I would have to grab the toolbar, I'd have to come to the scissors tool, chop it here, I'd have to then move this section to the end, and then I'd have to move the whole lot back, and then I'd get a chance to audition that, which is quite a lot of steps. Let's undo those steps and go back to where we were. And instead, let's come back to this idea of the rotate tool. So what I can do is to grab these notes, and I can just shuffle them backwards. And what's happening is that the first bar has now appeared right at the end. So effectively, it's rotated the order of the events that exist within that sequence. And that's a really interesting place to start. Now, just like the slip tool, the rotate tool sort of works in combination with the snap value, which is given here. And at the moment, I'm working in what's called divisions. And what that really means is I'm working in 16th notes because that's the division that's specified up here in the transport bar. So staying in division world, hmm. Sort of bad fun fair. Okay, so effectively staying with this particular snap value, if I really zoom in on this region, I can see that the pattern that I'm playing with in my bass line is two sixteenth notes and then a gap, and then effectively a pattern that's based around that kind of an idea of a sequence. So the other thing I could potentially do would be to use the rotate tool to change the actual pattern itself. So in other words, what would happen if this bass line started a 16th note later? Well, effectively what I've done there is to just shove all of the notes one 16th note back. Okay, and let's try an eighth note back, which would be to move them back one further place. So 
So that's interesting. Um, I'm going to stick with that for now. So if I went back to a bar now as my um, sort of snap value, then effectively what I've done is to fix those as this kind of more offbeat approach to the baseline. But again, I could continue to experiment with what might happen if I moved these back in time from a rotate perspective, but now in bars. And I'm going to just push these back one bar. And what that's actually going to mean is that the chord is going to move after one bar, then it's going to sit at two bars of the next chord and you can see that effectively this first chord move has been split now between the first bar and the last bar. Does that make sense? Well, let's hear what it sounds like. Okay, so I don't like that as much, but it's quite interesting just to be able to exp uh, sort of explore these different sort of arrangement style approaches to how things might work um, just simply by rotating the order at which things play. Let's just undo that step and take it back to where we were. Okay, so that's MIDI. Could we use this on audio as well? Well, interestingly and kind of brilliantly, the answer is yes. So what I've got is this little melody line, which is an audio loop, which is just playing back on top of everything else. It sounds like this. So, and you can hear the kind of sidechain pumping effect that's coming from um, a compressor, uh, compressor treatment. Again, I nearly said compressor. I've got my Sean Connery thing happening again. Something about that word. Okay, so what I could do would be to think, okay, well, I'd quite like this to be kind of like an eight bar phrase rather than a four bar phrase. So if I could change the order of the second half of this a bit, then maybe it would feel like a phrase that lasted for eight bars, even if it's made of the same notes. So again, using the rotate tool, what I'm going to do is to click on this region and I'm going to push it back in time. And of course, what that means, in fact, I'll come out of bar mode for a second. Let's just come back to division again for a moment. What I then have a chance to do is just literally move this along. And what Logic's going to do is to show me the original position of where the region started. So effectively now I can see that that line, this thin little line here was the beginning of bar six. It's basically just showing me where the region sort of starts. So what I can now do is to think, okay, well, how does it sound now that we've kind of pushed this back by a certain distance? Does it sound like a coherent phrase? Yeah, it does sound pretty good, actually. Okay, so that happened completely by accident. What I've done there is to basically move things back, but only 3 16th notes, which means that effectively the phrase in the second half is now kind of this kind of weirdly mad syncopated thing, but it's kind of great. What I could do would be to just experiment with taking that back an eighth note so that effectively the second half is kind of syncopated, but less quickly, if that makes sense. I really like that. That's really interesting. So the rotate tool allows us to work with both MIDI and with audio. It effectively allows us to reorder the sequences that exist within our pieces. 
effectively it's an amazingly useful and quick way of just being able to shuttle bits of information around but all within the kind of fixed limitations of a region length. So unlike the slip tool which has the potential to kind of shuttle in silence, in other words if we were working with an audio region and effectively the first bar of that was just silent, we can introduce that effectively that silence into our regions. What we have a chance to do with the rotate tool is to say no 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 there is no gap. Effectively what we're going to do is if we push a bit of information out of the left hand edge it's going to appear at the right hand edge. We're just cycling round the data within a particular region and as a result of that we can really play around with the structure of our tracks.